to our week of prayer. Our th and today's reading will be repentance and judgment. But before we get there, I just want to say a special welcome to each and every one of you, all, those who are physical and those who are virtual. I want to thank the Lord for your presence. But before we begin, we will pray. And after I'm finished praying, we will have a, a, an item of special music. Let's pray. Let's close our eyes and lift our hearts heavenwards. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity that you have given us, that we can all come together as one to present our petitions before you. Father, you take charge of this event. Guide us. Be with us. As we lift our hearts, open our air, that we hear your word. And we invite the Holy Spirit to be with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Just a child when I felt the Savior leading I was drawn to what I could not understand And for the cause of Christ I've spent my days believing That what He have me be is who I am and as I've come to see the weaker side of me I've realized this grace is what I'll need When sin demanded justice for my soul Mercy said no, I'm not gonna let you go I'm not gonna let you slip away From the cross he built a bridge to set us free And oh, but deep within our hearts There is still a war that rages And makes the sacrifice so hard to see And as midnight fell on crucifixion then The away as evil tries Peace and 
Corridan is repentance and judgment, the eternal gospel in the first angel's message. The proclamation of the eternal gospel leads to an, leads to an appeal for human beings to take God's side in the cosmic conflict. This is taken from Revelation 14.7. God's respect, God respects human freedom and invites every individual to respond freely to his plan for them. This most important decision will determine each one's eternal destiny. The call is like that of parents who, sensing the child's, sensing the child is about to make a wrong decision, would do all they can to dissuade them from making it. The appeal comes from the heart of a loving God. This is a global appeal. The magnitude of the decision is expressed through the use of three verbs in the imperative. Fear of God, fear God, give him glory and worship him. We will discuss all three in more detail. Fear God. Fear could awaken us to do something to avoid the danger that de generates it. In the scriptures, the presence of God can engender fear. Who would not tremble in the presence of a God who manifests himself in glorious and impenetrable light and that causes nature to shake and recede before him? Humans fear for their lives. Not because God threatens to kill them, but because they realize the experience is so intense that they fear they would not survive it. Exodus 20:19 explains this. This incomparable God approaches his creatures longing to be their God. Consequently, the fear that manifested itself in trembling and terror pulls them to him in awe, expressed in grateful submission to him in worship and in fellowship with the one who is life in himself. Deuteronomy 5, 26 and 27 explains this clearly. This is true reverential fear for the creator and redeemer God. The best biblical parallel for the appeal to fear God, which is Revelation 14, 17, also Ecclesi Ecclesiastes 12, 13, and 14. One, the imperative is used in both passages, fear God, indicating that this is an urgent meta matter. The call is universal in that it is addressed to all human beings. This applies to every person. To those who live on the earth. Three, the fear of God is connected to judgment. He will bring every act to judgment. This is taken from Ecclesiastes 12 verses 14. The hour of his judgment has come. Revelation 14, 7 says. Four, to fear God is associated with keeping his commandments. Fear God and keep his commandments. The saints who keep the commandments of God. Revelation 14, 12 states. The first angel urgently invites humans to make this glorious God their personal God and to manifest their fear of him or their awe in submission to his loving will. The alternative is to fear or submit to the dragon to escape death. That is taken from Revelation 13 verse 15. But only he who is the living one died but is now alive forevermore. Only the lamb that was slain can preserve life. This is taken from Revelation verses 1, chapter 1, verse 18. Give glory to him. Humans are, set as, humans are to set aside their pride and instead ascribe honor and glory to God. 
The angel specifies how humans immerse in a cosmic conflict in which God's justice and love have been questioned. Ought to glorify him. The phrase, give glory to God, is used in the Bible in the context of judgment to acknowledge human sinfulness and glow and God's righteous judgment. In such case, the phrase is a confession of guilt, Joshua 7, 19, or an expression of repentance, Jeremiah 13, verse 16. In Revelation, to give glory to God describes first what takes place in heaven, where heavenly beings declare with one voice that God is worthy of receiving glory because he is the creator. Revelation 4, verses 9-11. And through the Lamb, the Redeemer. Second, humans are commanded to give glory to God here on earth. Revelation 11, verses 13. Revelation 14, verses 17. And Revelation chapter 16, verse 9. Third, at the close of the cosmic, all will give glory to God. Revelation 5.13, Revelation verses 19 and 7. On earth, there is unwillingness to recognize that people are sinners and that God is a righteous, loving God. The appeal should go out to all, for some of them will witness the destructive upheaval of the forces of nature and will give glory to God. They will acknowledge that they are sinners and that God's judgments are just. Revelation 11, 13 and Romans 10, verses 8 and 9. Worship and Judgment The appeal to accept the majestic God of the Bible as one's personal God, to fear him, and to confess one's sinfulness, acknowledging God's justice and love is stated in the context of the announcement that the hour of his judgment has come. Revelation 14, 7. Judgment is, in principle, a legal search for the truth. A crime of cosmic proportions was committed by evil powers when they attacked the integrity of God's loving character. But in the final judgment, his name will be cleared. The wicked promoted the dragon's deception, but the judgment will reveal their mistake. It is now that humans should fear God and give him glory. The final judgment is a Christian doctrine. According to the Bible, the final judgment consists of three stages. The first is the pre-advent judgment in heaven, where the lives of God's people are investigated to reveal whether they have remained faithful to their faith commitment to the Lamb. Example, Daniel chapter 7, verses 8 to 10, chapter 2. Romans chapter 2, verses 5 and 6, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 8, 2 Corinthians 5, 10, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 8. Christ will come to save his people and not judge them. This was taken from Hebrews chapter 9, verses 28. Christians who believe in the immortality of the soul also believe in a pre-advent judgment. The judgment of the immortal soul occurs when the person dies. At that moment, the eternal destiny is legally determined. The Bible rejects the immortality of the soul and teaches that the person sleeps in the Lord until the coming of Christ. Second, there is a judgment after the millennium when the forces of evil and their supporters will stand before the throne of God. Revelation 14.10, Revelation 20, 11 and 12 states, to be followed by the third aspect of the final judgment, the executive phase, 
Revelation 20 covers this. When the cosmos will be purified from sin, this most glorious event was typified in the Old Testament by the Day of Atonement, pointing to the moment, the hour in this history, when the judicial process will begin in heaven, according to the divine calendar in 1844. Daniel 8 verses 14, Revelation 11, 19, Revelation 14, 7 covers this. While living in the anti-typical day of atonement, we are to appeal to humanity to fear God and give him glory. In conclusion, the glorious and transcendental God of the scriptures wants to be our goal, but the decision is ours. The final judgment will reveal that through the cross of Christ, God manifested his infinite love, saving sinners like us. For now, we have chosen to fear and to give glory to him, taking the side of the Lamb in the cosmic conflict. Brethren, today if you shall hear his voice, harden not your heart. Thank you. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we give you thanks and praise that your word, Lord, will go out and touch the hearts of, my, of men and change their thoughts according to thy will. Father, we thank you for your word that it will be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. In Jesus' name, amen.